now the next method that we'll be learning in our non destructive testing is uh, dynamic or vibration methods these are very very important and uh, some of the modern techniques that we use for non destructive testing so uh, let us see the uh, what is the concept and what is the principle behind these uh, dynamic or vibration methods so the fundamental principle is that velocity of sound through a material is uh, what is recorded and through that we uh, uh, find out the mod dynamic modulus of elasticity or find some relation between the compressor strength so sound through specimen and its resonant frequency is related to the modulus of elasticity of the material such relations are derived for solid mediums uh, considered to be homogeneous isotropic and perfectly elastic but they may be applied to heterogeneous materials like concrete as well so uh, when we consider concrete we cannot consider it to be a perfectly homogeneous material because uh, uh, you cannot you do not have uh, a very proper control over how the aggregates are going to set and uh, whether it will have uh, same properties in uh, throughout the cross section so that is not totally in control of uh, humans so the velocity of sound can be determined in two ways first is uh, the resonant uh, frequency method uh, and it is based on the principle that every, every object will vibrate or will resonate at a particular frequency that is the natural frequency of uh, that particular object you might have seen some opera singers breaking glass uh, with their voices so that is nothing but they match their the frequency of the voice to the frequency of the glass that is the material and then the mate material vibrates violently at its uh, resonant frequency and uh, the glass shatters right uh, that, that is one of the techniques for finding the velocity of sound second technique is by uh, passing short pulses of uh, vibrations of short pulses into the uh, material and then recording the time required for those pulses to pass through the material so through that also we can find the velocity of sound in non destructive testing of concrete either resonance method or pulse velocity technique both can be adopted so as i told you we can either use the resonant uh, method or pulse velocity uh, now dynamic or vibration methods uh, which methods are included in this first of all methods we have are laboratory method they are the resonant frequency method and field methods are pulse velocity methods see what i just told you is that in resonant frequency every material has its own resonant frequency and at that frequency the material is going to vibrate violently of course if the material is going to vibrate violently we cannot use it on site not possible for uh, the structures to uh, induce such vibrations in structure it, it will cause a lot of damage right so these methods are generally limited to laboratory itself whereas a pulse velocity method in which we pass a pulse of vibration or a pulse of sound through the body of the uh, concrete or through any any body this can be easily done on the field right so this is what uh, is the major distinguishing factor between these two test how we do it first one we uh, do it by transverse resonance or uh, torsional resonance or longitudinal resonance these are the codes in which uh, it is specified ASTM C21560 uh, in this uh, american standard test of testing method in this code it is uh, these methods are specified for field method we use mechanical sonic pulse velocity or ultrasonic pulse velocity it is given in ASTM C59760 this is one of the most important one ultrasonic pulse velocity we also call it as uh, USPV equipments uh, which are used for these uh, so for first three uh, these tests there is only one equipment that we use which is sonometer for mechanical or sonic pulse velocity we use single blow method or we use repetitive blow pulse method so using this we induce some short vibrations for ultrasonic pulse velocity we use sonoscope and or else we use ultrasonic concrete tester or 
P U N D I T, which is a short uh, short form of portable ultrasonic non-destructive digital indicator test. Right. So uh, this is one of the equipments that uh, certain engineers take can take to the site and. Uh, uh, since it's in the name itself it suggests it's portable so you can carry it to certain places right uh, let us learn uh, about the first that is the resonant frequency method and in this method we will be finding the resonant frequency of a material and to that frequency it is going to vibrate uh, what you need to know about uh, the resonant frequency is that Till now in physics we had studied about the tuning fork and all we had studied how it has a resonant frequency at which it vibrates correct but uh, what we have not studied is that a particular specimen has multiple resonant frequencies we call them modes modes so for we have first mode second mode third mode and so on on the first mode whatever resonant frequency you get generally is of the first mode if you increase your vibrations for example just for example let us say we have a, a glass okay and uh, this glass has a resonant frequency of uh, let's say 20 hertz at mode 1 okay first mode at second mode let's say it has 35 hertz on the third mode let's say it has 50 hertz okay and this is just a basic example random example what i will do is that uh, i let us say that i have a particular uh, equipment through which i can induce uh, or i can increase my frequency so i start with 1 hertz of frequency and i slowly increase it uh, increase it slowly and till the point that it reaches 20 hertz I have reached my first mode okay let us say that this glass does not shatter at this first mode generally it would but assume that it does not shatter I further I increase this to uh, more 20 let's say 21 hours 22 hours 23 hertz and then what we see is that the violent vibration that was there at 20 hertz now it suddenly starts decreasing that vibration starts fading and uh, it becomes less and less and then again when it reaches 35 hertz what we see is that it again vibrates violently then again if we increase our frequency to 35 36 37 again what we see is that there is a reduce in vibration and at 50 hertz it will again start vibrating violently so these modes are uh, generally the frequencies at which your uh, specimen vibrates violently okay so in this fundamental resonant frequency of the specimen uh, is determined fundamental is first mode frequency okay so fundamental resonant frequency is the first mode frequency from this frequency the dynamic modulus of elasticity of the concrete can be calculated a specimen of specified dimension is clamped at its center as you can see this is the specimen and it is clamped at the center with a driving unit placed against one end this is the driving unit and uh, a pickup which is placed against the other end those who are uh, into music or those who play musical instruments they might be knowing that a pickup is generally used for uh, picking up those vibrations of your musical instrument and then amplifying them for uh, uh, for connecting it to some uh, you know amplifier or something like that so a pickup is uh, a particular equipment like that same way we use a pickup here as well because this driving unit is going to induce some uh, uh, vibrations into it of some particular frequencies and then at its resonant frequency this is going to vibrate and this pickup is going to pick up that frequency and it is going to amplify it so you will be you will understand that what frequency it was vibrating to its max or to its max amplitude so from that you can find the resonant frequency of that particular material the exciter is driven by a variable frequency oscillator with a range of 100 to 10000 hertz the vibrations propagated within the specimens are received by the pickup 
amplified and the amplitude is measured by an appropriate indicator so we can uh, measure the amplitude to which this specimen was vibrating the frequency of excitation is varied until resonance is obtained at the fundamental that is the lowest frequency of the specimen so as i told you first mode is the lowest frequency to which it would vibrate then there is second mode third mode etc this is indicated by the maximum deflection of the indicator at that first mode this method will give you dynamic modulus of elasticity now modulus of elasticity what we had learned till now es it was static modulus of or i will say let's say for concrete if i want to write i will write it as ecs which is static modulus of elasticity which was 5000 root fck correct this is what is 456 gives you and through these dynamic or vibration methods we get dynamic modulus of elasticity or modulus of elasticity under vibrations and it is called as ed which is equal to k into n square l square into rho where ed is dynamic modulus of elasticity of concrete l is length of specimen n is a uh, frequency in hertz and rho is the density of concrete so what is this k k is nothing but uh, it is the conversion factor or if you want in metric units that is the gpa uh, giga pascals then the k would be 4 into 10 to the minus 15 in imperial units the k would assume a value of 6 into 10 to the minus units which is psi psi is pounds per square inch so if we are using imperial units it is it will be this particular method and as i already told you that this method cannot be applied at sites because uh, we would not want our structure on the site to undergo excessive vibration or excessive deflections under the resonant frequency that will be a very uh, worst thing one of the interesting technique in this which was uh, i don't know if it is very true or if it is just uh, a story but uh, it was from nikolai tesla uh, the great scientist nikolai tesla he invented something called as earthquake machine and uh, it was actually a electromechanical oscillator and it was renowned to uh, generate uh, such high frequencies which would match the resonant frequencies of the buildings and uh, that machine used to be very small okay and if you had if you placed that machine onto a building then the building would vibrate to its resonant frequency and it would collapse so it had uh, that uh, bad reputation you can uh, always find it on google it's there still there so uh, again i am uh, not sure if it is true or it's just a story but it is what uh, many people have uh, documented about tesla yeah so that is also the reason we cannot induce resonant frequencies on site to our structures uh, because they would collapse one more famous example i would like to bring to your notice which was destroyed by the re- fundamental resonant frequency principle is uh, takoma narrows bridge you can see this is uh, you, you even a video is available for this takoma narrows bridge and i don't know many of you might have even seen that uh, it was because of the wind or the air blowing across this bridge which caused this bridge to vibrate at its fundamental frequency or its resonant frequency and it started vibrating violently and shaking violently and you can see how it has got distorted here and even in this image and finally it broke so this is one of the very famous examples which uh, uh, is uh, demolished due to the resonant frequency principle right and uh, the dynamic modulus of elasticity and uh, c- uh, cylinder compressive strength there is a graph that we can see here and it has a variation of plus minus 10% so once we get the dynamic modulus of elasticity we can approximately find the cylinder compressive strength uh, in in a range of plus minus 10% so uh, let us say that if i have got a dynamic modulus of elasticity of uh, around 4.2 into 10 4 mega pascals then that would give me a compressive strength of 
yeah around this much so i have uh, a plus minus 10 percent of window in which we can safely place that compressor strength so this was it about the resonant frequency method in the next lecture we'll be learning about the uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity or the pulse velocity method till then take care thank you